Thank you so much for joining us today for this very special Friday Brief. We have been uh, studying or going through a series of messages on the anointing because, I mean, after all, what are we without the hand of God upon our lives? And uh, this is going to almost uh, three weeks. And I thank God that all these messages are in YouTube, they are you know, in the Facebook, and you can just go download there and have a go at them because, I mean, it's worthy the time and it's worthy the effort. Once again, thank you for being part of what God is doing from wherever you are in this country, in the diaspora, we just appreciate the fact that time and time again you have been with us and you are even recommending other people to subscribe to the platform so that I mean the gospel can go. Got her own. That's the most important thing that we need to do to be part and parcel of the Great Commission. Let's pray for the Word. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless you for your people. I thank you for they that will be downloading later and they that are with us right now. I bless you. I bless you that the Holy Spirit is with us and he is with them. I thank you for the fact that the Holy Ghost is never limited. He will travel through the airwaves and reach your people, wherever they are, and do them good. I thank you for each one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to look at something that is very, very important here. Even as we have been going through walking in the anointing. And I want to tell you today something that I believe is extremely vital. You are not an exception. God wants you to walk in the anointing. I'll say that again. You are not an exception. God wants you to walk in the anointing. After all, the anointing is Jesus. He's the Messiah. He's the anointed one. He wants to walk with you. After all, the Bible says as many as are led of the Spirit, of, uh, they are the children of God. The Holy Spirit wants to walk with you. He wants to lead you. He wants to teach you. He wants to do that to you. He wants to do that to me. And that's why, you know, I, I felt quickened just to tell you that God wants you to walk in the anointing. You are not an exception. I mean, whether it's pulpit ministry, whether it's marketplace ministry, you know, in the marketplace, mm -mm. God wants you and me to walk in the anointing. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter, one in verse 20 the bible says for no matter how many promises of god are, sorry for no matter how many promises god has made they are yes in christ and so through him the amen is spoken by us to the glory of god i want you to see god makes promises to everyone who cares to listen to him. The Bible says now, verse 21, it is God who makes both us and you. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthians. It's God who makes us. Both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set a seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Watch this. This 
is the way God wants you and me to be, to stand firm in Christ. Two ways. Number one, the Bible comes and says that he comes in us. We get born again. And he puts in, I mean, and the Holy Spirit lives in our spirit as a guarantee that there is more to come. That's number one. This is where we are sanctified. The minute we get born again and we continue to be sanctified as we walk with God. Watch this. For us to stand firm in Christ, two things. Number one, God comes in us. The Holy Spirit comes. Of course, he first of all convicts us of our sins. We get born again. We are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit stays in us. As a guarantee that we belong to God, we belong to Christ, and that is, there is so much more that is on the way. Listen to this. That's where it all begins. But then the Bible comes and tells us, for us to function steadfastly, he anoints us. He brings us enablements. He brings us the power, the abilities to function in Christ. Whether it is in our calling, whether it is in the giftings, this all pertains to our destiny. And this is why I come and tell you now again. Paul said, you are not an exception. He told the Corinthians what God has done for us as the apostles, as the ministers of the gospel, he has also done it to all of you in Corinth church. All of you. No exception. God wants you established in Christ. In two ways. The Holy Spirit living in you. As a guarantee. And mind you. There is so much in God. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Lives in me as a guarantee. That we belong to God. And God has so much for us in store. Bible says, I has not, what I has not seen, what he has not heard, the many things that God has kept in secret for each one of us, the Holy Spirit comes and reveals them to us. There's so much. That's why the Holy Spirit is in you. And if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost as a believer, please do. Receive that gift. Receive it. This is so important. Receive it. And when God comes and gives you that gift, He will manifest it through speaking in tongues. That's the Bible. But I want you to get this. The Holy Spirit is in you and is in me as a guarantee that number one, we belong to God. We are His. And number two, as a guarantee that there is so much more that God has for us and He wants us to accomplish. That's number one. Number two, he anoints us. We are given divine abilities 
divine enablements, divine power to function in our calling, to function in our gifts, to build the kingdom of God. That way, our destiny is accomplished. Can I help you today? God wants you to walk in the anointing. He wants to do it. Jesus gave himself for you and for me. Every time I read here, I read this scripture, my mind goes to Mark 1, verse 40, 41. Here is a leper. He comes to Jesus and he tells Jesus, Jesus, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus said, I am willing. In fact, he touched him. And I mind you, in those days, to touch a leper meant you would be unclean. Of course, what touches Jesus becomes clean. Jesus is not going to be defiled. No, 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 no. His blood, the minute it touches us, we are clean. We are washed. He told him, I am willing. And that man got healed that very hour. My mind goes back to Genesis 22. And I'm seeing Isaac. I'm seeing Abraham. God told Abraham, I want you to take your only son. God sacrificed him there on Mount Moriah. The Bible says Abraham started moving together with his son. And the some other three servants. Listen to this. Because this is a good picture of God the Father and God the Son. This is where John 3.16 comes in. For God so much loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. So that whosoever lives in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Abraham is going to give to sacrifice his son. But of course, you know, when they, they, they were halfway, Isaac is going to say, to ask his daddy, here's the wood. I mean, we have the fire. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Abraham tells him, God will provide. He will. He always does. They go up the mountain. Isaac, according to Jewish tradition, was 37 years. That time. They are on the mountain. He is 37. Full grown, fully grown. A lot of muscle. He looked, Abraham is very old. And uh, the old man tells Isaac, By the way, I want you to make the altar. He made the altar. And he tells him, you are the sacrifice. Lie there. Listen to this. I have a lot of respect for Isaac. He willingly put himself on the altar. Of course, God said, Abraham, I see where your heart is. So you don't, I, 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 you, I don't need you to put a knife on Isaac. There is the lamb. That's for another day. I want you to see this. Isaac willingly, my goodness, willingly put himself on the altar. Jesus willingly put himself on the altar for you and for me. John 10, 18, Jesus said, No one 
takes my life away from me. I give it freely for you. Listen to this. He gave his life freely for us so that we can be established in him and so that we can walk in the anointing and accomplish everything that God the Father intended for us before the creation of the world. He freely gave himself for you and for me so that our sins would be paid for. We would be in a place to be called the children of God, have the Holy Spirit in us to guarantee that we are children of God and that there is to tell us continually that there's so much God has for us in store. And to have us walk in the anointing. He gave himself. Nobody forced Isaac to lie on that altar. Nobody forced Jesus to go to the cross. You meet that in Galatians 1.4. He gave himself for our sins. Paul said it this way. I am crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20 I live, yes, but it's not me. It's Christ living in me. The life I live today, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and died for me. The walk I walk in this world, the work I would do in this world, is by faith in the anointed one. Is by faith in that anointing. He who died for me. Ephesians 5.25 Jesus gave himself for his bride so that he may adorn his bride and of course go to prepare a place and later come for his bride. He gave himself for us. It's also there in Titus 2.14. He gave himself for you and for me. So that you can walk in that anointing and accomplish what he wants you to accomplish when you are here on this earth. After all, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus so that we can do those good works that he foreordained for each one of us even before the creation of the world. How are we going to accomplish them? By being established in Christ through the Holy Spirit living in us and the anointing upon us. That's how we are going to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. Watch this. He gave himself for us. He wants you to walk in that anointing. After all, the Bible says in Romans 8.32 He who did not spare his own son that's God the Father but freely give him up for us. What else is he going to deny us? What else is he not going to give us together with him? What else? Psalm 84, God will not deny us anything that is good for us. Listen to this. 
God wants you to walk in the anointing. Whether it, it, it you are it, you know that anointing that is going to upon you is for ministry or marketplace one and the same because in these last days two things will be the mark of the church two things excellence and anointing excellence and anointing that's your portion may god help you to walk in that anointing that jesus so much wants you to walk in don't forget tomorrow tomorrow will be a very 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 unusual day for us we are going to have incredible time of worship from 10 saturday tomorrow 17th we are going to have worship service from 10 i don't know when it will end but we just want to come and worship our god i mean worship i'm not talking about worship experience i'm saying worship we want to come and exalt god he has done so much for us especially during the period we were going through covid-19 we want to worship him we want to worship him of course in the evening blow out service at 5 the blow out service for the youth and please join them and see what god is doing he is accomplishing incredible things through our youth ministry of course after that five at six we have the kiku service with mom it's just exploding full of revelation and then uh, of course on sunday we have our usual services 8:30 and 10:30 god bless you see you then